I'm ready if you're ready. So let's uh, get through this. What we're going to do is finish up on pointers and I'm going to go and review and make some more pointers for you. So what I did is I took the liberty of creating a brand new fresh template and uh, so I will upload the what we did in the morning so you don't have to you know you can use that and then I'm going to start fresh now and make some more pointers and so show you some more techniques and then um, probably take us through to lunch and uh, here let me move this. I've also stopped on the the um, paint file so I will uh, create a new paint file here so everything is going to be separated out for us okay so back at the ranch uh, I've got a clean slate here so we can kind of follow through things and I'm going to create some pointers I'm going to use new and delete so I'm going to say integer and uh, integer pointer p that's what we have already done and then we, before we had integer i, and we were using uh, integer i, and we were doing p is equal to the address of i, and we were doing all that stuff. So let's not use any i's anymore. Let's just use pointers. So in this particular case, I'm going to say p, because I'm going to assign p something, I'm going to say p is going to be equal to a new int. So p is going to be equal to a new int. And uh, I'm checking my syntax. My syntax is good. I just compiled it. I can also do this. So if I don't want to do it like that, I can do the same thing as I've done before with integer i and i is equal to zero. I can do this one and I can go integer and create two of them here. Pointer p. Here, let's just call this one p1. I'm going to change it to p1. And I'm going to call this one now p2. And p2 is going to be equal to new int. So I've done them both. I have one done in two steps, one done in one. And I'm checking it and it's compiling just fine. So now I have two pointers. So now I'm going to assign some values to them. And I'm going to use them just like I would I or any other pointer. So I'm going to say follow p1, have it equal to 5, and follow p2, and have it equal to 10. So now I just have like integer a and integer b. One's equal to five, one's equal to ten. So now I can see out, see out, and I'm going to see out um, p1 equals, and I'm going to put in here, well, what do I want? I want to follow p1, right? So I'm going to put a star, yep, p1, and I'll put an end line at the end. If I spell that one correctly, no. And E N D L. There we go. And now I'm going to also see out the other one. Probably shouldn't here. I'll just cut and paste it a little bit easier. Except for I've got some extra characters in there. Copy it. Paste it. Change this one to P2. And go ahead and execute it. And I have exactly what I would have expected. I have P1 is equal to 5, and I have P2 is equal to 10. Just like if I were to go integer A and B, and A is equal to 5, and B is equal to 10. But now I'm using pointers instead of named constants and identifiers. So when I've done this, I've done this. Let me draw this out. There's a reason why I've done this. Um, we can grasp this part, so I'm not going to put the source code out here. I'm just going to put what, what what's going on here. So I've got P1 and P2. So I got P1 and I got P2. And I've got two integers. Integer 1, integer 2. We can find out what memory address they're on, but we don't really need to. But I have this kind of thing going on right now. This is what it sort of looks like abstractly. P1 and P2. Now I can uh, introduce to you, let me get rid of that, introduce to you another pointer and have it equal to 
the address of something else. Well, I can, actually, it could equal to the address of a, pe a point, another pointer. So I can do this. I can go, let's make another pointer. Here, I'll put all my pointers up here, actually. And this one's going to be integer p3. And I need to use the reference for it, integer reference p3. And then I can say, well, what about p3 having that one equal to the address of p1? Hmm. So I can go address of p1. So then now, uh, what I've got going on is going to be an error message. You cannot convert integer uh, uh, pointer pointer to pointer. It's a double assignment. Um, let's let's not do that. Um, let's have it this way. P3 is equal to P1. Because it's a pointer and a pointer. So I have one pointer equal to the other pointer. So now if I see out P3, I'm kind of making this example up as I'm going through it. So <laughs> to forgive me for slight logic issues here. Let's say P3 uh, and I'm going to print out, I'm going to follow P3. So now I have P1, P2, and P3, but P3 is pointing to P1. P3 and P1 are at the same one. So if I execute it, and run it, I got 5, 10, and I got 5. Because P1 and P3 are really pointing to the same thing. So what I've done here in this particular case is now I've added another guy over here. And this guy that I've added is P3. So I'll stick him over here. Actually, I'll stick him over here too. I did this. So let me demonstrate to you what a dangling pointer is going to do do is how we're going to create this is uh, I'm going to show you how to create this stuff but you're not going to create this stuff this is what you're going to try and avoid these are the scenarios that you're going to run into so if I have two pointers in which I do I have p3 and I have p1 and they're both pointing to the same memory address and they're both holding the same value I just say well I don't want p3 anymore I want to I want to delete p3 so I can let's do it down here actually and I can say, well, let's delete. So we have new, and then we have the opposite of new, which is delete. So new takes on a new int, a new float, a new double, a new person. Because after lunch, we're going to go back and revisit the example we did yesterday with dogs and people. And we're going to create new people and new dogs. <laughs> Just the same way as we're creating new ints here. So we're going to come down here, and I'm going to say, well, the opposite of new is delete. So delete removes it. But we don't have to say delete integer, we just say delete, which is kind of inconsistent. And we delete through the pointers. So here we're going to say, underneath it, I'm going to say delete. I'm going to delete P3. Delete P3. And the syntax looks like that. And if I delete P3, I've removed the pointer. So if I do delete P3, let me go out here and I'll show you what this does here. If I say delete p3 I've essentially done this I've gone to what p3 is pointing to and I've done this well what happens to p1 p1 is also pointing to the same memory it's not pointing to anything valid anymore we removed everything we followed P3, which was pointing to the same memory that P1 was pointing to, and we've deleted it for both of them. Just the same way as we add it for both of them, we've deleted it for both of them. So what ended up happening here then, if I now see out P1 or P3, actually I can do them both. I've actually created two. I've created two dangling pointers in this particular case. because I have P1 is dangling and P3 is dangling. When I say dangling, it means it's not pointing to anything valid anymore. It's pointing to something completely invalid because I deleted it. So new allocates it, delete, removes it from memory. And what does it do? It just X's it out. So hey, you know what? This can be, this is no longer used, no longer being used. 
So now I have zero. So P1, I should put a space, you know what, let me put another. Oops. So we started out, P1 was equal to 5, P2 was equal to 10, P3 was equal to 5. Well, now I got 0. I deleted it. Technically, it's not supposed to be 0. It's it's invalid. <laughs> yep, you're going to get something different. You're going to get garbage is what you're going to get. Yeah. I'm in a virtual machine. So my memory is going to be an abstraction, so it's probably zero. It's I, When I saw this initially, I went, well, that's nice. It would be nice if it just made it zero. It doesn't make it zero. So you're going to have garbage printed out here. It's not going to make In fact, sometimes you see these really weird ASCII characters and stuff, too. It's garbage. There's no valid memory address anymore. So now, this is the common mistake people do. They think, well, P1, I still got P1, so I'm going to have follow P1 and have it equal to something. And you're going to do that over and over again. It's not going to equal anything because P1 doesn't point to anything. <laughs> so P1 and P2 and P3 are now kind of dangling, as we call it. So when we do a delete P3, we should do this one. Let's just say P3 is equal to null. And then anything that was also pointing to anything that P3 was pointing to should also be equal to null. Is it nil or null? Uh, nil. Let's try nil. Nil or null? Uh, null with one L? No, no, no. Let's go null. <coughs> it's two L's. Well, I have to look up the syntax because uh, I don't remember. <laughs> null, null. P3, null undefined, first using function. I might have to actually include a library for it as well, so let's leave that out. I believe it is null, but I need to. Um, I need to include the library for it, which I haven't included. Uh, I have got namespace. I think it's the C C I Cano something or other. Uh, long story short, we've created two dangling pointers. We can, if we include the correct library, we can use the null keyword. There's also a nil, but null I believe is the one we're going to use, and I'll check up on that. Each language has a slightly different syntax for it, and I'm trying to remember C++ right now. Uh, so long story short. Uh, you would say that it is equal to this null or nil, which represents a no value, an invalid value, which means if you were to go check for it, I actually have it in the lecture, so I'll give, it, I'll give you the syntax later. If you were to go check for this, then it would come back and say, oh, I'm sorry, we're null. We're not pointing anything valid. So when, if you try to set it to something, oh, follow PTR1 and have it equal to 5 again, won't work. You're going to get an error message that comes back and says, hey, it's a null pointer. It doesn't point to anything. Oh, okay. So you're basically telling the compiler that uh, P3 is now invalid and so is P1. But you have to manually do it, just the same way as you have to manually delete it. So let's not delete it anymore. We're going to pull it out. So actually, I'll just comment out the line here. And I will put another comment in here. It says deletes P1 and P3, but it still leaves P. Actually, we can leave it. Let's leave it back in, actually. This deletes P1 and it also deletes P3. Let's just take P1 and P3 and reassign it to something else. And then I can play around with a memory leak at the same time. So this one here creates two dangling pointers. <laughs> pointers that don't that, that do not point to valid memory. There we go. It's kind of a long comment, but uh, here. Pointers that do not point to valid memory. Okay, good. All right, so <clears throat> we say, okay, let's, we can still use P3. We can still use P1. 
So now I'm gonna um, now I'm gonna introduce a new memory. So now I'm gonna go. Okay, so we'll say p1 is now gonna be equal to a new int, and p3 is now equal to a new int. So the opposite of that would be taking m and having both of them equal to null. So we're knowing they're not valid. We're not using m anymore. They're not pointing to anything. Or better yet, yeah, let's just do that. So p1 and p3 are now equal to something new. So now I've done this. I've done, I've started over again, actually. I've come over, over full face here, and I've gone p1 and p3. And I've got two new boxes here. Got one box, two boxes. And hopefully you see that we've done this now. Every time we say new, we're going to get new. And we're going to get two new memory addresses. So if we printed out this memory address, it's going to be different than these two memory addresses over here. This one we deleted, we got rid of. So now we're starting fresh again with uh, two new ones here. I'm going to put a little line in here to separate out this, separate out the logic here. So now I'm going to create what's called, uh, so this is a, this up here is a dangling, dangling pointers. So here, I'll put it up here. Dangling pointers. And the dangling pointers we have are P1 and P, P3. All right, so down here, I'm going to cause a memory leak. So I've got P1 and I got P3. So the memory leak is going to happen when I go P1 is going to be equal to P3. So now I created two new ones, but then if I ever do this, I go p1 is equal to p3. I'm going to go back and do that same thing over again, but I'm not going to delete anything. Then if I do that, now I have an extra piece of memory, because what I've done is this. If I said p1 is equal to p3, this one does this where we had this now we have this and we have no more this so what's pointing to this? nothing yeah one thing at a time So. This is a good point. So each pointer only points to one memory address at any one moment of time. <laughs> only one memory address. So now we've got garbage. So this is what they call a memory leak. So memory leak. Memory leak. And it's the memory that P1 used to point to is allocated but not deallocated. So we got this scenario now where this here, can I draw a circle? This one <laughs> is garbage. <laughs> no more. <laughs> Did it cause me a problem in the program? Nope, it compiled just fine. Is it going to run? It will run, execute just fine, just like anything else. Works just fine. Do that enough. And eventually I'm going to get an out of memory error. Just the same way as I got a stack overflow error with the stacks. When I did the recursive function yesterday, I called the function, called the function, called the function, never stopped calling the function. I was supposed to get a stack overflow error. I think I got a memory segment fault kind of thing. If I created a function that allocated, 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 I'm going to run out of memory eventually. <laughs> Am I I didn't assign any values to them. So this is what I did actually. I created here, if I did this and I said follow uh, what I got P1 and P3 so I can get rid of the one in the middle. Follow P1, I'm going to get garbage. Follow P3, I'm going to get garbage because I didn't put anything there. But I should get the memory address. Watch this. So 
if I follow it, I got zero and I got three nine nine something. They're invalid. I created the memory, and you can see that I created the memory here. And I can go here and watch this. I go copy, paste. And then take this out and just go, well, just, just give me what addresses these are. And then give me the address of P1 after I assign it to P3. I'm going to see the address is going to change. In here, after. I didn't put anything on there, so I get garbage and I get garbage. And then now I see I have two different memory addresses. P1 is at the 3D2. Actually, they both start out there. The, the last difference is, is the 7, 478 and uh, 4F0. After now, I got P1 is now equal to the same one as P3. So now, the, well, how am I going to get at? I can't get at the one that I removed through the deletes because it's gone. But you can see I've just changed the memory addresses by assigning one to the other. So I'm changing and what who's pointing to who so I can essentially create this abstraction of this variable that I'm using that's using this memory. And I can have multiple, I can have like 20 different things pointing to the same memory. And if I delete it one, through one of them, I've deleted it for all of them. <laughs> that's the dangling pointer. If I've relocated those 20 to some other piece of memory and I leave this piece of memory and nobody else is pointing to it anymore, I've created garbage. I've created a piece of memory that can't be deleted anymore because there's no new to it. So. Are we good? Okay. Kind of getting there. We'll digest it a little bit. Well, let's add uh, let's add something else. So we got, um, this is these are the integers, right? So I'm going to go down underneath here. And uh, I don't want to be partial to integers, so let's call this character. <laughs> character C. So what's that going to be equal to? Well, C is going to be equal to a new character. It's all the same. So once it's equal to a new character, then we can assign it a character. And we can essentially do the same operations. So I can also do this. I can go float F. And now i got a pointer float. Or actually, I can do it this way, new float. Now I have an, a new float, new character. And I can assign it and use it just like everything else. I can't take, though, and make, if I've got a C here, I'm going to get a type mismatch here. If I say this, I go C is equal to F. This is going to cause a type mismatch. This is a type mismatch. It's, it's, it's typed. So I have a C as a character and F as a float. Even though they're both pointers, the size of their memory is different. <laughs> and uh, so if I went C is equal to F, I'm going to get a type mismatch error. It's going to come out of that when I compile it. It's going to tell me, can't convert float to character in assignment. <laughs> So even though we have two pointers and we're trying to take one pointer and assign it to another pointer, they have to be the same data type. But data type still matters because the data type is determining the size of the box that we're allocating. So if we only out if we integer size is going to look different. So here, oh, actually I'll leave that one alone. If we make a the box is going to look slightly smaller. <laughs> if we were to visualize it, do we really know how big it is? I it's just going to be some bytes that are allocated for each one of the different types. And then we have different operations that can be performed. Why yeah. Do you do integer and long and use, use like two ah, you can do this. Uh, let's do, you want a long and an integer? So I'm going to do as you suggest, and we'll see what happens here. So this is, a, I have to comment out this because I'm not going to be able to compile. So let's go with integer. Do I have an I in here? I haven't got an I in here, so let's do I. And then uh, we don't have to 
notice so I don't even have to allocate so I'm not going to allocate down here either don't have to allocate unless you want me to allocate I can allocate all right let me just allocate I'll show you what I'm talking about e equals a new integer and then we have a long l equals a new long and then what do you want me to do typecast it Put the long into the integer or an integer into the long probably integer into the long so so the l is going to be equal to and then I'm going to cast it integer uh, what am I going to integer well no the long I don't have to tap yeah l is equal to i as a long not an integer <laughs> there we go that's a typecast though that typecast is just basically converting one type to the other and it's going to tell me that there's an invalid conversion between long int and long int Oh. I'm sorry. We should do long. You should put the integer inside of the long, but this is not recommended, and don't do this. In fact, I, 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 I it makes me shiver just thinking about doing that. Don't do that. Well, why do you need to do that? You don't need to do that. In object orientation, we're going to cast the object types. <laughs> that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. You're just going to take a big number and stick it into a little space, a little bit of space. And just create a big space if you need a big space. Create a little space if you need a little space. When you start mixing stuff around, you get precision errors, you get memory truncation, you get a bunch of issues. But the, the cast would work if we did the cast correctly, but don't do the cast. I, I don't even want to show you the cast. So, but Let me show you something else, though. It makes sense. In here, I've got the integer i, and I've got integer, let's just go integer a and integer b. a and integer b. I've created two references, but I haven't allocated any memory at all. I haven't allocated memory until I go new. So if I did this, if I went like this and I went, oh, let's put i back in here too, integer i. But integer i is not going to be, integer i is just going to be a, a regular variable. It's not going to be a pointer. But a and b are pointers. So if I did what I was doing before and I went, you know, a equals new int, I've allocated a new int. And then if I go, well, then how about a is going to be equal to the address of i, I've done the same thing. I've caused a memory leak because now a is no longer equal to new int. a is now equal to this new address of i, so I've caused a memory leak. So I don't need this line at all. So I see a lot of students do this. This is why I put this in two separate lines. I see a lot of students doing this. Okay, I got it. It's ready to go, which is equivalent to doing what I just did a few minutes ago. And then I go, oh, A is going to be equal to the address of I. Okay, but you just created garbage. <laughs> so don't go new int unless you're going to use it as a new int. If you're going to assign it to an existing pointer, like it's the same thing as if I did this here. People just they learn this format because it does everything all together for you. You learn the format, you memorize it, you use it all the time, and then you create garbage all the time. <laughs> Constantly create garbage because then I can do this one. It was a B is equal to A. Okay, I've got all my assignments now. I've just now created two pieces of garbage. <laughs> What's that going to do? If I do it a lot, it's gonna, my program's not going to run. I'm going to run out of memory because I'm going to fill up the stack. Excuse me, I'm going to fill up the heap. Which brings up another interesting, interesting example here. So I'm going to save this guy. Actually, I'll put it over here. <coughs> See if I can make this a little bit bigger. I can now, because I now I have learned how to draw. I can show you the. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I haven't learned how to stretch the screen though. Where's the arrow I'm supposed to get? Ah, ah. Now I can stretch the screen too. <laughs> Let me draw the runtime environment for you, what I was trying to describe to you yesterday. Apparently, I guess there is a way of doing this, so we can use an electronic board, but I'm too, too low-tech to figure it out. For some people who have studied computer science, you've seen this diagram before. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to put it into three little sections here. This is what they call the Windows runtime environment, or the Unix runtime environment. Windows, Unix, it's all the same. 
we get this. This is what it looks like. We have a stack. I'm going to describe dynamic memory to you because you need this concept wise in order to understand why in the world we're doing this. Heap. So we have a. This is memory, by the way. Then we have code and data. So we got here. Code, data. So when we go integer i, that's the data I'm talking about. <laughs> this is the stack entry, but it's also the data. So on the stack, this is the code that we're writing. The code is going to say, well, this is not going to be in C. This is going to be in machine code. It's going to be loaded in a stack entry. So up here in the stack, we're going to get something that looks like this. If we were writing the stack entries in C++, the stack entries would look like this or something. Something similar to it. I call it a stack because the first one, integer i semicolon. It goes in reverse order, pop in, first in, first out, first in, last out. Uh, don't worry about it if you don't understand the data structure. But we load up the, so you double click on a program in Windows. <laughs> you double click on it, you get the machine code that's coming from a file that's stored on the disk. The machine code is this code right here. So we have this code that you get. It gets loaded up into memory. This memory starts out down here. You know, let's just say it's zero, and it goes to some upper limit up here, let's say 1,000 or something. This is what's the, called the process. So we are going to label this guy a process. The operating system, this is what I was trying to tell you yesterday. It's kind of a little bit of an operating systems concept. This uh, process abstraction is nothing more than a memory abstraction used by the operating system. This is going to be 32 or 64-bit, depending upon what processor we're working with. What do I mean by that? It's going to be like the size of the format of the stack is going to be formatted for Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, whatever. Determines how many items get pushed onto the stack simultaneously. When we execute the program, we pop an item off the stack, we give it CPU time, we run the instruction. What's the instruction going to do? This instruction is going to create this. It's going to put the data down here. So the code is going to be the integer i. So this is the code that's running in the stack is going to be the code that we've gotten from the exe file, not in C, machine language. It's going to put the data, oops, let me not put that in there, edit, undo, this guy here. It's going to put the data down here. I didn't mean to put the data like next to it because then it looks like it goes together. So if we put the data down here, then we're going to have I down here. So I will get put down here. I shows up right here. And then the stack entry is going to remove I when we're done with it. When does I get removed? When it's out of scope. When it's no longer being used. We don't need it anymore. This is all managed by the stack. When we go pointer I and we do this, we do uh, integer P. And then we have the flip side of that. We have integer uh, S. It's going to be equal to new int. This guy is doing the same thing as this guy. We got a pointer, and we're going to have a P, and the P is going to show up down here because it's stack allocated reference that's created. However, new int, this guy here, if we say p is going to be equal to, uh, let me just change this so it says uh, n equals uh, new int. It says as long as we say p is equal to new int or s is equal to new int or somebody equals new int, new int sticks something up here. And up here we get new ints. We Actually, we just get ints. Ints up here in heap memory. 
heat memory is uh, managed by the programmer. We allocate, we deallocate using new and delete. So up here we also have the delete that's going to remove it. The int's going to create the int. We reference it through the stack controlled entry, which is where we get the dangling pointer and where we get the memory leak from. This guy here is from this guy down here. This guy over here is keeping track of it. These are a reference that's stack oriented. We created it up here. That's how we lose the link. When this removes itself from the stack, we have no reference to it anymore. <laughs> it becomes a piece of garbage up here. The problem with the scenario, and you'd think they'd fix this by now, but it's not really a fix, it's just the design of the system. The heap grows this way, starts at the highest extreme of the memory, and you load it in, load it in, load it in, load it in, load it in. It goes, goes downward, and the stack grows this way. They grow into each other. So if you have a recursive function like we saw yesterday that just keeps adding stack entries, adding stack entries, adding, it, we get stack overflow traditionally. In our case, we get a memory, memory segmentation fault. If the heap's going to grow into the stack, eventually we're not going to have any more stack space and we're going to get memory out of memory error messages. We're probably going to get segmentation faults as well. Same, same concept as before. It's a memory issue because we've run out of memory or we've written over memory that belongs to somebody else. Because the heap is dangerous. The heap, we're going to go new, 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 new. Oh, we got stack. Oh, right on top. New, 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 new. And it gets rid of, and then we corrupt our stack because we've replaced the stack memory with new, 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 new. And this is dangerous. This is just going to go, oh, okay, integer i, integer, okay, that got a loop. Oh, recursive function. Okay, recursive function. Okay, recursive function. Recursive function. Oh, wait a minute, ran out of memory. <laughs> Got rid of all the news that we did and did everything else. We're just going to overwrite each other. So this is in constant battle with this. Stack grows into the heap. Heap grows into the stack. This is the this is how Windows runs programs, by the way. This is what they call the runtime environment. And this is the standard Windows 32 or 64. Depends on how big this is. Bigger runtime, bigger stack entries, more number of stack entries, faster processing simultaneously. Which means the 64 bit processor is going to run faster because you're going to have more processing time, because you're going to have more stack entries, and you're going to have better power than you will on a smaller configuration. You go back to even a, you go back to a 16-bit, you're going to have smaller, everything smaller, everything smaller. So the kind of the increment that goes up and down is going to be essentially going to determine the size of the stack entries, but then as well as how much is going to process simultaneously with other processes. This is just one program. we got multiple of these running at any one moment of time. CPU scheduler goes and figures out this guy's head space here, give this guy some time, give this guy some time, give the other guy some time. So it kind of juggles between the multiple running processors. That's what you get in operating systems concepts. That's my Monday Monday night lecture. <laughs> yes? <laughs> no, that's okay. That's why I'm showing a, a brief mm -hmm. overview of it. For, uh, for the uh, pointer key, uh, uh -huh. then you have that information how does it look in stack? Like, ah. do you introduce it at star? When you compile your program, the compiler takes your C instructions, turns it into machine code, mm -hmm. or actually turns it into assembly language. Assembly language turns it into machine code. The assembly language does a, you know, um, create a register, create a this, that allocates the memory, does all of the instructions in assembly to work with this memory to load the memory up, to take the memory down, to move things around in memory, to juggle down the lower level instruction. When you load it up under the stack, you're just taking those instructions, putting them into a data structure called a, it's a stack data structure that just loads them up. And then the CPU, and outside of this environment, we got a CPU, we have a CPU scheduler. CPU scheduler queues these things up and says, okay, I'm not going to run this one. Now I'm going to run that one. Using the hardware on the system, the processor, the math coprocessor, everything else, takes and executes each one of the machine code instructions so that this can actually run. That's the brains of the operation. When I say P down here, pointer P and integer I, this guy just says, we're going to stay down here. So I, integer I, put I down here. This reference, put a reference down here. When we did new, the reference goes all the way up to the heap and says, okay, new, here it is. Not controlled by this. This is still controlled. This reference is still being controlled by the stack. 
and the instructions. This here, this new integer, just says, hey, allocate me a new integer. Okay. <laughs> That's dangerous. That's why they call C++ as an object oriented language extremely dangerous. Other languages like Objective-C keeps track of this in the stack. So stack is what they call statically allocated runtime. Heap is dynamically allocated runtime. So what C++ did is they took a static language when they added the object orientation to it, made it hybrid dynamically allocated to support the use of data objects. Because if you're going to create a bunch of objects, why put them down? You're going to fill this up. You're going to have the same problem you do with recursion. You're going to fill up, but you're not going to fill up the stack. You're going to fill up the data portion. And you're going to overwrite your code. You're not going to work. So we got to make better use of the process space. So allow the programmer to use the heap memory to create all those objects. And then when you're done with the object, take the object out of memory. Delete the object. Create a new object. Use that object. Take that one out of memory. Think of a database program. Every time you run a query on a database, if everything you opened up stayed in there, you'd run out of memory. <laughs> but if you're able to allocate it, deallocate it, allocate it, deallocate it, or allocate it, then reuse that space. So most database, when you write a database program, you're going to allocate enough to hold the average size table, and you're going to set the limit on the size of the table. You're going to have the space allocated when the program first starts up, and then you're going to erase that memory and use it again for another query result. So you have this thing called a cursor, which is the memory that you're organizing that's going to hold the result sets, that's going to hold all the temp data that comes out of all these table operations that you're going to do. And it, it, the cursor is set. It's a certain size. So if you set the size, then you're never going to run out of memory space while the thing is running. So that's how you can run a database on a dynamically allocated database kind of concept. Because before we had objects, we knew exactly how the program was going to run every time we ran it. <laughs> we can organize the whole thing. We can organize the instructions. We can run an instruction, create an eye, remove an eye, create another eye, remove an eye, reference the eye, all we want. When object orientation came around, we have no idea what's going to happen until the program runs, which means we can't statically allocate it. If we statically allocate, we have no what, what, is it, what It's like arrays. You know, you set the size of an array to a certain length. You can't write past it. Well, you can, if you cause an error. So, um, which means reminds me I have to talk about arrays too. But uh, long story short, <laughs> I'll talk about arrays when I talk about arrays of objects. I'll save that concept. Long story short, with object-oriented programming, we don't know exactly how the program's going to run. We don't know how many objects the user, the user's going to create. We don't know how much memory that object's going to allocate. So we need to be able to better manage it. So we use new with it, new and delete, to create these objects and put them out here. And then when we're done with them, we're supposed to delete it, get rid of it, and then create a new one, delete it, get rid of it. So when we do this, when we do this scenario here, We've created a new one, we've created a new one, we've created a new one. Okay, now this one's going to be equal to this one, and that one's going to be equal to that one. Why do we want to do that? <laughs> so the point I was trying to demonstrate is, why put it out here? You know, why, why put this little box out here if we don't need it? Instead, we're, this here just puts it down here. Okay, we got this reference. It's a lightweight reference. Reference goes out of scope. Reference is gone. As soon as we do new, then we start filling up our memory. So until we're going to use it, we don't do new, which means you're going to see this more often. Which, you know, everyone who learned C in the beginning, they go, oh, the shortcut method, integer i is going to be equal to something. Declare it and initialize it all in one shot. And then they transfer that knowledge over to C++ and they go, oh, yeah, a float C or, you know, float F and float F is going to be equal to new float. Well, this is garbage. In this particular scenario, we've created two pieces of garbage, which it's me not memory, not memory intensive. I mean, if we did this and we do this all the time in Objective C, and then the next line of code we go down here, and then our reference counter goes to zero, and it gets garbage collected for us automatically. So we can be sloppy in other object-oriented languages. This works fine in Objective C, no problem, because <laughs> we created garbage. The garbage collector is going to pick it up for us. Okay, I'm sorry. You're, oh, you're not going to use that. Okay, no problem. I'll pick it up for you. So without ever having to worry about it. So if you come from an Objective-C background and you're working with C++, usually you end up creating more garbage than C++ programmers because you're, you're able to create garbage in Objective-C. That's the whole point. 
you allocate, initialize, allocate, initialize, allocate, initialize, and every single one of your every single one of your Objective C new object instantiations allocates and initializes automatically. And then you take that object and you have it equal to something else. <laughs> okay, we don't need a memory anymore. Deallocate it. <laughs> but it's automatic. So the process, the environment is going to do it for you. Objective C does it for you. C++, Windows isn't doing this for you. Windows is not clean. Not, Windows is not following you around cleaning up your garbage. So, like Objective C. So, which is a major difference between the two languages, actually. So, all right, back, back on focus here. Went on a slight tangent. Uh, so what do we got here? I was showing you the new. So we can create an object. We know how to create an object, right? We just created one. We created one. So let's add an object. I want to create a new instance of this object the same way. So actually, string is an object. We can create a new string by using a new string. The syntax is the same. So here, actually, let me just add, let me add another file here. So I'm going to go file, new source code file. I'm going to put a person in here. We're going to add a person. Um, so I'm going to save the file. Ooh, that means I have to put them together. Eh, it'll work. It'll work. Um, let me say, I don't have a project. Uh, that's not going to work. Let me stop this one. I'm going to leave this example alone. I'm going to open up the example that we ended with last time. Because that one we already created a couple of objects. So this one I'm going to leave alone. I'll leave, let you go out there and know that uh, here, this creates a memory leak, <laughs> aka garbage. <laughs> creates a memory leak. Uh, integer i, okay, we're good. Let's just make sure we compile, then I'll leave this one alone. It's not going to cause a problem though, because it's only two pieces of memory. It's not going to, our program still runs. You could create it, you can actually uh, do a do a do while loop. Actually, let's do a while, well, we can easily find out what happens if we go here uh, while. Um, one is greater than zero. <laughs> I'm going to show you what happens when we fill up the heap. I'm actually kind of curious to see what's going to happen, actually. Uh, while one is greater than zero, let's not change one at all. Let's just leave one alone. Or we can just say while well, true, or while well, something, or not true. Um, let's create a new int. Integer, well, integer is kind of small. Well, it, that's okay, it'll take a little bit more time. Integer, bad pointer, bad PTR. <laughs> it's going to be equal to new int. Uh, every time we do new, it's going to make a new int. Which actually demonstrates another point I forgot to tell you. If we do this, and then we go another line down underneath, and we go integer uh, c. No, integer. Let's do it this way. Integer bad ptr. Let's create the reference. We're going to get multiple references of the same name, which aren't allowed. Instead, we have to do this. Otherwise, we can't go integer i, integer i, integer i, integer i, integer i. It's going to be a problem because we already have i. But we can do this. We can do it down here where we've done. Um, I can go c is equal to a new character. <laughs> c is equal to a new character. C is equal to a new character. C is equal to a new character. And I keep doing this. I'm going to have uh, one, two, three, four, five. Each time I do that, I'm going to create. A new, I'm going to run out of memory faster that way. If I do it in a loop, so let me do it in a loop. So, if I uh, actually, if I leave it out right now, that's not going to cause a problem. Let's see. This should run actually, because I've only got what two pieces, so I got two extra C's I didn't really need. No problem at all. If I come down here, and let me take this out because this is not desired. I already have a C that creates a memory leak. Every time we go new, so creates a huge memory leak. 
So while i is less than zero, something's going to happen. So nothing's going to be printed to the screen. We're just going to essentially uh, see how fast it takes us for the program to crash. Well, we can't tell how many times it's going through, but it, the program is going to crash on us, but we can't tell. But it is frozen. I can't touch anything in here. I can't control C it. Oh, I could control C it. Let's print something out. It'll print to a certain point. And then here we'll put a counter in here. Integer um, C counter equals zero. Counter plus plus. After we create each one of them, we'll increment it. Counter. Then we can see it stop. It's going to run. Uh, let's see out. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, I have it running in a virtual machine environment. It should run out of memory, but I'm not sure if it's going to. <laughs> let's see, we'll just give it a few more minutes. Because it, it's going to use all 8 gigs of RAM that's on this system, which it's kind of a fake environment. You're going to get yours to crash faster than mine. Mine might not actually crash, but let's see. Let's see if I can pause it to see if I can see the numbers incrementing. Yep, they're incrementing. <laughs> I got too much memory on this computer. And it's not. It's running in a fake environment because of the virtual machine. It's going to run out of memory, probably not for another 15 minutes, <laughs> so I'm going to stop it. So, uh, anyway, long story short, new, 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 new. I haven't really created any memory leaks. Well, actually, I have new, new, new. Every time I sign into new, I'm creating more memory after more memory after more memory. So, on a slower system uh, with, uh, you know, in a non-virtual non machine environment, that should break eventually. Should break the it should break the processor, but my memory is being managed differently, so it might actually be doing garbage collection for me. Who knows? So I'll just put it here. Should run out of memory <laughs> eventually if you wait long enough. Eventually, all right. All right. So that should run out of memory eventually. But uh, if you're going to use this code example here, I'll just. It will cause. I'm gonna comment it out before I save it because it will cause. Uh, it will cause some computers to actually crash faster than mine. Mine didn't. Uh, mine actually didn't crash, which is interesting. I didn't get a stack overflow either, though. I got a segmentation fault error, which is actually kind of interesting as well. So, all right. So I'll leave that one. That one is uh, going to be updated. Uh, I'll put it up on the website um, at lunchtime. So and then I'll save this one here. Let's go back and look at the object concept. So yesterday, we were working with this one, and I added a few things to it um, in the morning, actually, <laughs> not, not too long ago, um, to make it a little bit more feature rich. Because again, somebody was telling me that uh, we only uh, I only did integers in here. So I took dog, and uh, I made uh, so a few extra data types for it. So I took dog and I made it integer age, a float weight, and a string name. And the problem that I was having with string yesterday was I was not including the using namespace and I have to do that for string. So, And string is a lowercase. I'm confusing it with Java that makes it an uppercase. And Java strings an uppercase. So unfortunately when you work in multiple languages that's one of the things that happens is you go, is it upper, is it lower, and then you have to memorize that C++ everything's lowercase. <laughs> Java is truly object oriented. You have to make it uppercase. If you don't make it uppercase, the class file won't compile. And if the class file doesn't even match the same name as the class that's defined inside of it, it won't compile. And string is uppercase. But long story short, it's lowercase in C++. So. so that's what I'm going to show you. <laughs> We're going to create some pointers of these objects, but I'm kind of refreshing your memory on what we did yesterday, just in case you missed this yesterday as well. So what we're going to do now is create some pointers of these objects and put them in main and see how that works. But I want to uh, show you what changes I made. So in dog, we uh, added the integer, the float, and the string now. So we have different data types. 
I obviously I changed the constructors to match those different data types I put in. So now we have the default constructor, which we kind of ended with last time. We have the dog that takes on an integer a for the age, a weight to float w, and now the dog that has a an a and a float. None of them have a string, however. I need to make I probably should have made another constructor that uh, takes on the string, so it can have a name, a weight, and an age. But the idea of these constructors is to have one for each one of the combinations, because then you can make them in different combinations. So, and here actually it wouldn't be too hard to just do this here. Um, I need to take on an integer a, a float w, and a string s, and then I've got one for that combination. And then I think I'm still missing the string on its own, so I can do like this: you know, dog string. S. So now I have one that takes on a string, one that takes on a string, a float, and a, and, a, uh, and an integer as well. And uh, so then if I changed it here, I also have to change in the corresponding C++ file, which let me show you because I filled in the, uh, last time we didn't do the constructors for each one of them, because it was kind of tedious actually, so I did it uh, this morning actually, but I didn't do those two I just put in. Uh, but we here we have the setters and the getters, and we're returning the age and we're returning the weight. So we had to we had if you remember we had this method bark. So in dog.c++ we had the default constructor. So I put in here uh, some comments that said this is in in the default constructor, and uh, I so this is changed from yesterday's code, and I'll make this available at the lunch break so you can download it. Uh, actually, I uploaded it already. It's available on the website. I think I put the newer version of it up there too, so you'll get the newer. Uh, so in default constructor, and then we have this one here that's going to be in the um, integer a constructor, and then we have the in the float constructor. I didn't implement the other constructors. No, I do. Oh, I have this one here. I can do the same thing, and probably uh, let's just take this one here. We have two more of them that I just added. I can just cut and paste this one here, where I can say. As an example here, this one also takes on string, string s, and then this is going to be the one that says uh, string s constructor, and then we're just going to take the name and have it equal to s, and then I have the one that just does the s on its own, so I'll just take this one up here, copy it, and stick it underneath it here. It seems kind of tedious, but unfortunately if you don't do this later on, you try to run the constructor. We're going to run the constructors in a few minutes and you're going to notice, oh, it's not implemented. <laughs> so although it seems kind of tedious to create all of these up front, um, and in uh, other languages, and especially in Eclipse as an example, um, it'll do it for you automatically. You just press a button that says creating constructors. <laughs> yeah, which automates it for you, but it's really hard to learn what the constructors are when you have when you rely upon, it's like learning math one plus one while using a calculator. <laughs> you don't really learn anything about that. You just learn how to operate the calculator. So a lot of Java people know how to operate Eclipse actually, and they know how to create the constructors automatically, uh, but they don't know what the constructors are. So I just put in the uh, constructors in the implementation, so I'll be able to make some uh, instances of objects. I don't think I need to put string up here as well, so. Include string. Oops. Start ring string. Well, that's an interesting. How about name? <laughs> name is equal to s. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, very good. So we have a working program with a dog in it. So let's just work with the dog because I know dog is working. Uh, so if I go into main. And I come up to the top here. Actually, I made a person yesterday, so I'm going to do the same thing with a dog. So remember the integer PTR or P, and we had P is equal to new int. It's the same concept. So I'm going to say dog, because it's a dog that we're making, just like we said person. And I'm going to go here, uh, Fido. Fido. I can do the same thing. I can do just like integer i, and then I can go Fido is going to be equal to a new dog. Or I can put it together like I did here. And what I've done is, then is I've created a reference and then I've allocated a new person. So I created a reference here and in two separate steps I took Fido and allocated a new dog. 
because I can have many dog names and reference it by the same dog in memory. Same thing I did with that integers, I can do with the objects. So we can have one object call it a table result, if I'm going back to the database example, and then have many different result sets and have it pointing to the same memory that I've allocated for the table results, and then just keep populating the table results with the new query results. So I've only got one big old huge chunk of memory that's allocated, and I'm reusing it for all of the references to all of the queries that I'm running over and over again. So most databases designs are done this way only because you have to reuse that memory. You can't afford to have a new section of memory for every query that the user runs. It's just not going to work out that well. It's better to do this or to do this and not use, okay, so let me, let me discuss the differences then here because we don't have to use the pointer here. We don't have to create Fido and we don't have to create person. We can go, we did yesterday and do this one here. In fact, I can go dog, um, my Fido, oh, my um, static <laughs> dog, <laughs> creates a static dog. That's not allocated with new, so I don't have to ever say new anything. I'm using it just like integer i. So I'm using that just like string. Do I ever use an asterisk with string? And there's a string's not a pointer. I can create a pointer for string. I can create a pointer for a dog. I can create a pointer for a person or an integer for that matter. But I don't have to. So you never have to use pointers. In fact, there's a lot of programs that never use pointers at all because they're afraid to learn them. But here, if I do, uh, let's just talk about dog for a second because I actually have some dogs created here if I just do this and that so hold on to pointers for a second if I go dog uh, Fido well my Fido M Fido if I do this I'm using the default constructor this is default constructor so I've created a dog, and you notice there's no opening and closing brackets or anything. And there's no opening and closing brackets here either. Because this is like saying, this is the equivalent to this. Integer pointer i is equal to new int. No opening and closing brackets or anything. So new dog, new int. Actually, I could just leave that in there, actually. If I want to run one of the constructors, I supply it with, and then here's a dog d1. So I, instead of going Fido, so this is the default constructor, I'll make Fido, I can't use the same name because I'm making instances of objects over and over again. So let, I'll just use the, what I've got here, the d1, the d2. So this one is using the default constructors, no arguments. If I want to create the dog with some arguments, then depending upon the order and the number of arguments I give it, I can create dogs with different um, different initialized data according to the way I want to do it. So for example, D1 here, I created dog1, and I set the age, well it's taking an integer value, so if I go over to the dog over here and I look at this, I have one that takes an integer, and the integer happens to be the age. So if it's going to run the age, then it's going to run, well, what's it going to set the other stuff to? Whatever I have it run. So over here, this default constructor is going to set the, it's going to put it to the screen in default constructor. It's going to set the age to 21 and the weight to 50. This one here is going to take, set the age to A, but what's going to be the weight? Actually, let's try it out and we'll see what the weight's going to be. So we come over here, we've made a dog D1, we've set another constructor for age, we set the age, but let's see what the age here we got the age printed out here, so I'm going to add something to the age to print out the weight. The weight didn't get set, or the weight did get set. Well, let's say, take a look to see what happens here. So I'm going to go in here and go D1 weight is, we just set the age. We use the constructor to set the age. D1 dot get weight. I don't have any typos. Let's see what happens. So we set the age. What do we set the age to? Uh, 
35. We're making the dogs are getting older by the day. Uh, here we go. The weight is what is that? <sighs> garbage. The reason why I wanted to do this, I want to show you something. <laughs> is garbage. <laughs> So I probably should have put a space in here before the D1. So D1 age is this, D1 weight is this. I didn't set it. So what a lot of people can do, what you should do, could call the other constructors. Or you can use, well, I don't want to get into this in Super yet. But let's, uh, let me just make, let me just check my syntax real quick before I do it, actually. Add this one here. I don't think. Uh, uh, something remind me of the syntax. That's not going to work. No, that is going to work. Let's let's just. Is it this or is it this? Hmm. It's this. Hold on one second. Let me just test something real quick. No, we didn't allocate it. Is it? Well, okay. Let me save this till after lunch because I have to look up the syntax because I can't remember off the head because I program in too many languages and I can't remember what it is in C++. If we have one of the other constructors running, we can tell it to run the default to set, and we can have the default run for us automatically, depending upon how we're going to do it. The reason why we have garbage allocated, we have what's called a hexadecimal. So let, let's just take a look here. Let me compile it the way it is now. Here, actually, let me put the space in here so it looks a little bit better. I'm trying to demonstrate a point to you uh, without doing it correctly so you can kind of sort of see what happens. This is not a float value. <laughs> it's a hexadecimal value which means it's not in a data format that we would actually expect because we never allocated the guy. We never allocated the object. What we did here was we said uh, uh, this is D1 that we created and we created them here. So if we did D1 we can change the way we're initializing this guy to actually allocate it by going D1 is going to be equal to a new dog Oops, if I spelled dog correctly. And then run dog with 35. So I'm going to allocate the memory for the dog. When I allocate a memory for a dog, I'm going to get a weight, a string, and an integer. It's going to be a new weight, a new string, a new, a new integer, a new float, a new double. Because this is what new is doing for me. It's going to give me all that new stuff. And then I'm going to pass it the 35 as the constructor. So it's going to give me a problem. Uh, let's see. It's going to give me invalid conversion from dog to int. Yeah. Ah. Um, I don't have the cons I don't have the constructors lined up. Let's just 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 see this real quick. Dog D1. Did I have a D D1 above it? No, dog D1. Fido D1. Dog D1, D1, dog. Uh. Ah, pointer. Yeah, but look, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What do I have in here? 35? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I need to change. Let me. Okay, so my problem is I forgot the reference. I'm making a reference, but am I calling it a reference? <laughs> so if I do this, this isn't going to work, actually. You're right, because this needs to be new dog. If I'm going to follow the format correctly, if I'm going to run the constructor that sends 35, then I put 35 in here. My problem, what I did, is I left out the asterisk, So, which is what you're going to do. You're going to do the same thing I just did, actually, over and over again, because it's like when you type the source code, I just unless you are copying an example, you're thinking of it while you're writing it, so this is a reference, so which is how I figured that out. So I always think if you're using new, you have to use a pointer with that. You also have to make sure that if you're gonna, if I'm gonna make D1 a dog like I showed you yesterday, the dot no longer works. Instead, it's this reference here. 
which is equivalent to the same thing as the dot, but because it's a reference piece of memory, the reference is going to require a, this minus sign and this greater than sign, it, 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 this two symbols together to give us this fake arrow looking thing. <laughs> Why they did it this way, don't know. But, uh, and then I'm going to easily find to see if I've used it in any other syntaxes. Here it is down here. I have to do this. I have to get the age. And then I also have to get the weight down here. So I'm changing in all spots where you put a dot. If you're using a class as a reference, you have to put an arrow instead of the dot. It's like a follow. The arrow is supposed to be go, follow it. Because if you put an asterisk in there, you'll get a syn it, the syntax doesn't look right. It, it's a, a multiplication. So in other other concepts, if you did this, what you're really saying is this: follow the age. But if you do that, it's like d1 times age. <laughs> Doesn't work. So they had to come up with another symbol for it. So instead of that, they're going to do this, which means the same thing as the dereference operator. Anyway. And the only way you're going to remember that is to practice it and to, to figure out, oh, what's going on? I'm going to have some error messages. Now if I run it, i got sort of the same problem going on. Because I have to tell it to, to run or I have to sell it to initialize that data. So there's two approaches that people do with this. So, and this is what I'm going to kind of, we're going to break for lunch soon, don't worry. This is what I'm going to kind of show you. I'm going to kind of sort of prepare it ahead of time so I have it working for you so I don't have to fumble around with it. But... If I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six different constructors, I got choices. I can, in the implementation up here, I can automatically set. So I have here, I have age to 21 and weight to 50. My problem is I need to set the weight to 50. So I can come down here and I can say, well, which one was that that I was using? I was using this one that said uh, age. Here it is, age. I can still do this and include all of the different default values for each one of them. Or I can run this one as well <sighs> for any of the other ones. So I can set the values that I want and then go back. And then what we're doing is we're overloading the constructors. When we go with inheritance, we overload the constructors. And I want to show you inheritance so I can overload them together and show you what's going to go on with each one of these suckers. When we inherit one object from another object, then we rely on the constructors because we're not necessarily making these objects ourselves. So in this particular case, we're making the objects. And if I'm not going to use inheritance, it's just as easy for me to set each one of them. When I we use inheritance, I have the this and the super concept. So I have this object that belongs to itself, and then I have the super object, which is the object that I inherited from. When I create the super object, I get it everything up in the, I get everything in the hierarchy. When I create my object, I get all the supers all the way up to object. And I'm not necessarily creating them. I'm creating, this is just a dog that I'm creating right now. Now, if a dog was, um, if I was creating a, a special kind of dog that was inherited from dog, I get that special kind of dog, plus I get the dog. But I'm not saying how to create the special, I'm saying how to create the special kind of dog, but I'm not telling the compiler how to create the ones that are underneath it. So then we end up overloading constructors and calling each one of them individually, which is what I'm going to show you after lunch, actually, because it's too long to get into it right now because it's already 12.09, <laughs> so it's too long to get into it right now. So just to conclude this concept, so we can start at a fresh point after lunch, we can use the same pointer concept with objects. It's done exactly the same way. The only thing difference here in the syntax that we're looking at is that we're passing it using the constructor the same way as we did before. So up here I can do this dog, uh, not a pointer, I can just go here dd1 and this one can actually take 35 in there. Just like this one's taking um, another constructor that's taking an integer value and a float value for the weight and then I can set the other corresponding values for this inside of each one of the constructors. So I can make instances by passing it information by a reference or by a very, just a named name constant. When you do this, you're not allocating any memory. It's on the heap. Excuse me, it's on the stack, not on the heap. When you do this, that guy's being allocated on the heap. Sometimes you'll end up with memory locations if you're using pointers inside. In this case, we're not using any pointers inside a dog, so we're not going to have that problem. So.
dwell on it, think about it, and I know it's kind of a lot. So what we're going to do is take a lunch break. And then after lunch, we're going to hit inheritance, arrays. Inheritance is going to be last. I'm going to say that one for last. But we're going to do arrays, arrays of objects, which is a little bit different. More with constructors with the super end of this and a beginning part of inheritance, which will take us through the rest of the content for this first weekend, which is about a third of the course. So, so let me stop this video. I'll make this, I'm going to stop this one actually and make sure it compiles. Upload this during the break so you'll have it and then we'll start fresh with another example because uh, I want to show you some PowerPoint stuff to give you the constructor order and then demonstrate the constructor firing order for you so you can kind of see that work as well. So, questions before we break? Uh, can you say dog d1 happens to dog, uh, dog d1 is equal to what? Dog? No. Uh, dog 35. Yeah. It's static. You haven't dynamically allocated it though. But that does work, but as long as you name it something unique. It can't be D1. Huh? Like it's uh, longer. It's the same thing as doing this. These guys are accomplishing the same thing. But it's not a new dog, it's just dog D1. You can actually do this. Dog 35. How can you get at that though? <laughs> Dog 35. Yeah, but he has no name. Age is 35, but he has no name. Well, he has no reference. No static or no dynamic reference. If you want to, just have because your D2 is a two has two elements. What if my D1 has 35 elements? How how do you do that? Oh, that's what I was trying to tell you. In the ones you're setting only one or two, you go over here. One of the most common ways of doing it is just to do what I just did a few minutes ago. Put the weight in here. Or put the name in here. Does he have a name? I didn't, I don't know. I'm just, it's incomplete. <laughs> put the name, put the weight, and set it to default values. Or call the default constructor, and I'm going to demo that. We're going to look a little bit more about the constructor behavior after lunch. But the concept is, at a primitive level, you can just assign them, assign them to default values inside of the other constructors, if you wanted to. Order, or you can call back a constructor. Huh? And the order of what is, what is important, because the, the first one is... Any the order is very important, because this is the order it's going to call the constructor that is associated with that order. Mm -hmm. If you put it into a different order and you don't have that order created, it's going to th throw an error message for you. Yeah, it's not going to work, uh, which is a good question. But this here, this dog 35 is the same thing as going, you know, dog. It's the same thing we wrote before, but we, before we gave it a reference. Now we're not giving it a reference. So this guy is like a lonely, homeless dog. <laughs> Doesn't belong to anybody. <laughs> well, he is technically garbage. But we, you know, if we had something to the screen, um, here, actually, we'll call him dog. Dog four. I think he's gonna no actually it's just a dog. Ooh, can I do dog? I think I can do dog. Let's see if dog's gonna work. Yeah. He's gonna print out a default constructor message. I think I have it. Oops. I think I have it and it should print out a default constructor, default constructor. <laughs> well, that's because I've used it like a couple of different times. But um yeah, he works. But how can we, he's not, there's no reference, static or dynamic, to this guy. So. Okay, we'll just leave this in here. All this is going to, here, no reference. <laughs> static or dynamic. There we go. All right, let me end this video, and then I'll upload the stuff. Um,